Hey guys, Colin here, hope you're well. So today I'm going Stoke Frederick style. So I've got my shades on, I've got my headphones on, I'm in my crib here. And I'm gonna give you a little uh, video, a bit of an introduction into getting started in cybersecurity. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my journey uh, into cybersecurity, what that kind of looked like. Uh, and also more importantly, some tips for you if you're trying to break into this industry, uh, the kind of things that you can uh, get involved in. Um, so you're kind of prepped and ready to, uh, to approach organizations looking for employment, uh, looking for maybe a change of career, or maybe you're expanding and developing your own career. Um, so the, the kind of mindset that I'd be looking for as a, as a recruiter in that in that particular space so what kind of stuff can you do in cybersecurity? well to be honest with you the field is just massive if you look at information security in general not just cybersecurity, there's tons of stuff going on uh, right from technical to non-technical uh, areas of specialism as well my area of specialism as, as most people know from my youtube channel is malware reverse engineering uh, but also i love i really love coding i love threat intelligence i love insider threat investigations you can get involved in so many different types there's malware there's network security this incident response, threat intelligence, I really, really love, uh, security operations, threat hunting, digital forensics, investigating malicious insiders, pen testing, red teaming, blue teaming, cyber threat exercising, security risk, the list really, really, really just grows and grows. Organizations nowadays uh, are really investing in cybersecurity. It's great to be involved in this community, have some skills, at least have some knowledge of what's going on in the, in the industry as well, because that will definitely help your career. No matter what it is that you're doing in a business, you'll definitely have a cybersecurity element to, uh, to what you're doing. My journey, let me just cover what I've, how I kind of broke into the industry myself. I was, uh, I guess as growing up, I was always a bit of a geek playing with computers, that kind of thing, but I was never amazing at them. I could never write code as a teenager or anything like that, realistically. Uh, but I was never afraid to break things, uh, and I, I did break things quite often. I, I, I generally had to fix them in my little home lab most of the time. Uh, I always remember hacking, uh, what I thought was my kind of first hack was uh, was hacking the scoreboard on, on, on uh, Minesweeper. Uh, so my, my dad used to be really frustrated that every time he played the game, uh, my high school would increment. Uh, and that was just so simple trick that I really, really loved. Uh, just kind of messing people with people's brains, but actually kind of stayed with me uh, throughout the rest of my career that actually that kind of hacker mindset and that kind of uh, mischievous nature really kind of played a part in my career. Um, I was always going through like my employment, I was always that guy who could write macros in work. So I was always like good with Office, good with Excel, that kind of thing. Um, and so I could always write a macro or two, stitch a bit of VBA together. Uh, and realistically, I couldn't actually write them. I was just pinching code from like Stack Overflow or MrXL.com or whatever it's called, uh, and just all various people, uh, places on the internet. And so I kind of learned through kind of trying to solve problems in work by writing a bit of code. I ended up kind of reverse engineering other people's code to actually understand what the hell it does. Um, so that kind of got me in the mindset of picking apart different people's code and I could like work out what worked best and, and what have you. And I wrote some pretty cool applications that I'm really proud of um, throughout my career, like stuff for tracking fraudsters and uh, you know, to kind of like case management tooling and stuff like that as well. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. Uh, I also got my got my hands on um, some some malware throughout my my kind of early twenties. I guess I was I was kind of growing more and more into the investigation side of things, looking at uh, e-crime as it were, and cyber security, or cyber criminals, that kind of thing. And I worked in fraud and security, um, and so I, I was investigating criminals who are you know kind of robberies, theft, that kind of thing. But there was always kind of a cyber element to it as well. So half the time criminals were communicating with each other in different uh, different ways, and those investigations needed there there was some forensics required from people's machines that kind of thing and I was always involved in that kind of aspect so it, it got me kind of really interested and I took an amazing course um, through the edX platform called CS50 the CS50 is amazing if you want to just go from zero coding to like writing web apps and writing Python and uh, not JavaScript and C and all the rest of it um, and it's an amazing course and it's completely free offered to you from Harvard uh, via the edX platform you can't get better than free and you cannot get better than than Harvard so uh, absolutely amazing course and it realistically changed my life one of the P sets one of the problem sets in CS50 was you had to write some code some C code to recover some deleted files and that just blew my mind absolutely blew me away that you could write I don't know 50 lines of code or probably not even that probably 20 lines of code uh, and you could literally just a while loop it, um, you know, basically grep through a binary, pull out, 
um, JPEGs with the with the magic file header, uh, and and you were like a magician. You'd go to your, uh, you know, you'd show this to people who haven't got a clue about what what forensics is, and they think you're a wizard. It's unbelievable. So I started a data recovery business. I got more involved in forensics, and I did some some really cool sp uh, stuff in that space. And then I broke into the finance sector. So I was really, I, I just wanted to be in cybersecurity. This was it for me. I wanted to investigate crime. I wanted to to look at bad guys. I wanted to pull apart infrastructure, and I wanted to respond to incidents at the highest level. So I joined the bank. I was working uh, within uh, an incident management team. So I was like the guy pulling together all of the technical response teams together when the shit was going down. And it was fascinating. You got to see so much stuff going on in a, in a, in a bank. And it was just a global organization. We had so much fun. The team were just insane. Um, and so, yeah, I, I learned so much stuff in such a short space of time, just being right in the thick of it, dealing with incidents. Um, but my, I was never hands-on. I was never that guy that was like actually responding to the incidents and like getting the bad guy out of the network. So an opportunity came along within the same organization to do just that. And I jumped at it. I learned loads of stuff around malware, reverse engineering, and what was needed to, to really be at the forefront and the cutting edge of, uh, of incident response. And that's what I did. So I, I, I got involved in the CERT team. Um, and it was just all about soaking up knowledge from the people that's around me. And really learning off and feeding off some uh, people who are just so passionate about cybersecurity. And I think it's really, really key. Someone once told me, that you are the average of the five people you surround yourself with. And I think it's really good advice that if you're in an environment where people are learning and willing to share information with you, then that will only benefit you. And hopefully you can do the same and contribute back to others as well. So just soak up everything that you can, find out what you're interested in, find out your passion, uh, and, and you'll, you'll really excel in your career because it just becomes fun and it's no longer work anymore. Um, so that's it. So when I was uh, when I was dealing with malware all day, every day in a bank, I, I fell in love with Portuguese banking trojans. I, I became a bit of a specialist in that environment. I started a YouTube channel just like talking about my analysis, and it grew and grew from there. And I was really passionate about um, kind of uh, in, uh, helping inspire other people to to do this kind of thing in, in, in uh, malware research. Um, and then back in my day job, uh, I now I left the bank and our leader team uh, of incident response bandits. Uh, so we look at threat intelligence, malware reverse engineering, forensics, incident response, that kind of thing. And I, I have the most fun because we really, really focus on, on, on threat hunting. So it's really cool. Um, so like I say, there's something for everyone in cybersecurity. So let me talk about tips uh, for starting out. So what I would say, if you've never, if you don't work in cybersecurity, or if you're looking to expand your uh, on your own development, the first thing I'd say is learn some attack methods. Learn about what bad guys are doing in the industry at the moment, how they're attacking environments. You re read all the time about China and Russia, the US, the NSA, whatever. Um, go read some really good blog posts from like FireEye, from Cyber Reason, uh, from uh, all of the kind of researchers as well on the on the internet. There's some you know high level stuff, and there's some really really low level in the weeds you know pulling out malware and either pro kind of blogs um, but whatever floats your boat but just learn about the attack methods uh, so you probably want to read about the mitre attack framework have a look at that and then also look at like some nation state um, uh, blog posts that relate to ATP malware for example and you can see the kind of tools and techniques that these bad guys are using to break into industries and actually they're not 99% of the time doing anything particularly groundbreaking they're using old exploits their old techniques or these are just kind of tried and tested techniques to get into organizations because once they're in and they got a foothold on the network and life tends to be a lot easier on the inside. So learn some tricks, learn some attack methods, uh, get up to speed, maybe set yourself up with a malware in a lab, I've got plenty of videos on how to do that. Or if you're into breaking things or just hacking things and want to think more like a hacker, go and do some CTFs. There are tons of platforms out there on the internet. One of my favorites is hackerbox.eu. I've um, got tons of virtual machines on there and virtual environments you can just go and play with absolutely for nothing. Uh, and more importantly, there's a whole community of people that can help you and, and you can uh, collaborate with and just kind of uh, challenge yourself as well. I would say as well, pick an area to focus on. So if you want to be a, a technical specialist, look at malware. Maybe if you want to, you're interested in network security, you want to look at DDoSs, you want to look at maybe threat intelligence or uh, reverse engineering exploits, or maybe you want to be a, a master at kind of countering phishing attacks, that kind of thing. Well, that's great, but just kind of deep dive on that on, on that subject uh, and become, you know, try and soak up as many uh, bits of information as you can. If you want to learn about network security, that's cool. Then it's good to know what a DDoS is, how a DDoS works, but what different types of DDoS are there? Maybe you, you want to look at like, what's a SIM flood? What's an ICMP flood? What's 
ICMP backscatter? What's a charge and attack? What's the difference between TCP and UDP? Why does it matter to a business to, to put defense mechanisms in place about these kinds of attacks? Also look at different industries that are being targeted. So if you want to break into different, in, break into uh, cybersecurity, you may, you may want to target specific industries that really appeal to you. So I find it quite interesting to work for an environment which is part of critical national infrastructure. That has a lot of meaning in the UK, right? So if you're, you're trying to defend against something that really matters to somebody, uh, and in my case, that's an internet service provider. If we get hacked, well, the internet might be down for millions and millions of people, and that really, that really means something. You might look at uh, industrial control systems, uh, finance, telecoms, utilities, that kind of things, all super, super fun businesses that invest heavily in cybersecurity because they really, really need to defend against this kind of, uh, this kind of stuff. As well, what I would definitely recommend is have a mindset of always be hunting. So you might go and learn about stuff. Let's say you learn about malware, learn about DDoS, you get some threat intelligence skills, what have you. Always have the mindset of how do you go looking for this kind of stuff in an organization. So you learn something in detail, that's perfect. You'll actually know what it looks like to go looking for it in that organization as well. And so bring those skills to the forefront and keep your knowledge fresh keep reading those blogs, keep up to date with what's going on, what's the latest kind of attack vector that the bad guys are using, and go looking for that in your environment. More importantly, go looking for that um, in, in your environment. How, What logs do you need, what systems, what tooling, what people, what processes, that kind of thing. Always be hunting, absolutely. Uh, as well, what I would su suggest is look for a business that really supports your learning and development. Not everybody knows everything, but if you've got a team of people who are really passionate about learning, about sharing, contributing to the community, that will grow and develop you as a, as a, as a person. As I say, no one knows everything, but if you can have a business which really supports and has a proper development program in place, that will absolutely catapult you into this industry. Uh, and also, final tip what I would suggest, get involved in the community. There's loads of people on Twitter that you can follow. I'll absolutely share that on the video as well. Some of the cool people that I follow and that I learn from on a daily basis, but more importantly, contribute your research. If you're learning about stuff, you, you're finding new skills, you're finding new, uh, new blog posts, you're finding new techniques that bad guys are using, whatever, whatever. Make videos, write blog posts, just talk about it, tweet about it, whatever, and you will help other people as well. Uh, and that's really the best thing that you can do. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you manage to break into the industry. I hope you have fun working in cybersecurity. It's an awesome industry. Uh, and we'll check, uh, definitely follow me. And, uh, you know, we'll definitely chat soon.